a right hand single tooth worm has a catalog rating of 2000 watts at 600 revs per minute when meshed with a 48 tooth cast iron gear. The axial pitch of the worm is 25 millimeters, the normal pressure angle 14.5 degrees, the pitch diameter of the worm is 100 millimeters, and the bearings are centered at locations A and B on the worm shaft. What we would like to know is the thrust reaction of bearings A and B. This is the third example for the gear force components main videos. Examples 1 and 2 and the two main videos are linked in the description below. To find the tangential component and therefore the axial component of the interaction force, we'll carry out the same procedure we've carried out in the past. With the power and revolutions per minute information, we can calculate that tangential component and to find the overall interaction force W, we realize that we first need to calculate the lead angle lambda. Tangent of lambda will be equal to the lead divided by a circumference. And with the lead being equal to the axial pitch, the axial distance between threads, we find the lead angle lambda. With a friction coefficient of 0.043 that we can calculate with the sliding velocity, more on that later, we can find the total interaction force W. Looking at the orientation of this force, and this we know because if the shaft of the worm gear is rotating counterclockwise, the threads of the worm are moving in the negative z axis and therefore making the gear rotate clockwise as a result of the interaction forces. So just to sum up what we did till this point, with the power and speed information, we found the tangential component of that force, tangential for the worm, and with it the overall force W. And since we now know the direction of the axial component of that force, we can do a simple statically indeterminate analysis to find the axial reaction forces at bearings A and B. From a sum of forces in the Z direction, we find an expression that relates RA to RB, and by knowing that the total displacement from A to B is the displacement from A to the worm, plus the displacement from the worm to B, we use the axial loading deformation expressions to find the value of the axial reaction force at bearing A. With this value, we go back to the sum of forces in the Z direction to find the axial reaction at bearing B. These axial reaction forces will be very important to calculate the equivalent load of a combined radial and thrust loading at the bearings. Thanks for watching.